Good morning, everyone. I'm David Talbot, Managing Director and Head of Research at Red Cloud Securities. We're very pleased to host Forces Metals with us today. Richard Parkhouse, an independent director, is going to speak to us, and he's going to talk about bringing their large permitted Narasa uranium project into production in Namibia. This is a site that I visited uh, probably four or five times myself in the, in the past several years. So, uh, Richard, you will have 10 minutes to speak, and then we'll have a five-minute Q&A session at the end. Uh, attendees, please feel free to ask questions using the Q&A link. So take it away, Richard. Thanks, David. Hi, everybody. Um, I've recently been appointed to the Forces Board. Great to be with you today, and thank you, Red Cloud, for giving me the opportunity. During the next 10 minutes, I hope you'll see the potential in Forces, especially given where the sector is going. Let's take a quick look. The uranium price has moved out of the doldrums, and analysts see a new bull market. Some commentators are targeting rises to $80 by quarter four, and analysts are clear that mines can only produce economically if the price stabilizes above $65, and this will position mines for production again. On the demand side, governments have woken up to the need for nuclear power, and 514 reactors are being planned and proposed to meet the challenges of climate change and increasing demand for electricity. On the supply side, mines have shut down or curtailed uneconomic production and inventory has been used up or, more recently, acquired by investment funds entering the market, further impacting supply demand gap. The WNA estimates supply is only meeting 74% and this gap will widen over the next 20 years. The global demand for production is increasing dramatically. Before I... Hang on. Before I um, go and launch into the presentation, I've just got to draw your attention to the forward-looking statements, um, which will cover the presentation. Forces, who are we? Forces Metals is a TSX-listed exploration and production company with both uranium and gold operations in Namibia. It acquired Valencia in 2007 and Namidpla in 2009, which combined, combined to be the Narasa project. Since Fukushima, forces weathered the doldrums at minimum cost, ensuring licenses and permits were kept up to date, and in 2015, completed a definitive feasibility study, which concluded proven and probable reserves in Narasa. Also, forces acquired a gold license for metal exploration at Ondondu, and entered an earn-in agreement with B2 Gold, giving them optionality to buy the asset over a period. Namibia is considered to be the fifth largest uranium producer in the world. It is mining friendly, politically stable, and has great infrastructure. Over the years, we have built strong relationships with the government and they're very pro forces. Jeremy Hangula was appointed to the board earlier this year and he has strong ties with the government. A key part of our strategy is to advance Narasa, given the proven mineral reserves. We're in the process of appointing an operating team the first of which was announced this morning. Willem Kotze, a highly experienced geoscientist with extensive mining experience. Like many other miners and explorers, Forces has been waiting for the price of uranium to rise. Consequently, we reorganized, recapitalized, and are implementing a strategy to build on our strengths. The board and team have considerable mining experience and with a flat structure can move quickly to exploit opportunities when they arise given our interest in acquiring new assets. So hopefully you can see why Forces is well positioned to the sector dynamics. Our flagship is Narasa, and it's made up of the two sites, Valencia and Namibla, seven kilometers away from each other and 35 kilometers away from the famous Rio Tinto's Rossing Mine. It has a full license with strong DFS results from the 2015 study with reserves of 91 million pounds, grading 200 ppm, producing 5.2 million pounds per annum over a 17 year period. Its economics are strong with pre-tax NPV of $623 million and a low estimated cost of $34 per pound. Narossa has a favorable topography and close by access to a seaport by sealed road. And as you can see from the grid on the right hand side has most permits in place. Narasa is already advanced with infrastructure agreements and has water, power, roads and building infrastructure already available and some built. As I said earlier, Forces is well connected with the local government, which has developed over a period of years. So Narasa is a great asset and a great opportunity, particularly as we see uranium price rising. 
the slide is not changing on the screen. Um, we missed, okay, it's now changing, sorry for that. Look at the isometrics. Both sites are modeled as open pit designs. Valencia has an area of 1.3 million meters squared, Namibla 1.1 million meters squared. The detailed reserves show that Valencia reserves are 68 million pounds and Namibla 22.3 million. And these have been dealt with um, uh, on confidence levels of proven and probable reserves using standard technical guidelines. Looking at the compelling DFS economics and financials, we see, and as we've seen before, the total reserves are 91 million pounds. Um, it's estimated to be one, of, if it, when it comes into production, to be one of the top six productions globally with 5.2 million pounds per year. A net revenue of $5 billion over its life, pre-tax MPA of $623 million, um, and pre-tax IRR of 32% and payback of 4.4. Forces are currently looking um, at updating the DFS from 2015 and incorporating more current project economics and an analysis and detailed assessment of the suitability of new bulk ore sourcing technologies. If we look at it in context of actually the other mines around the world, you can now see where Narasa would fit in with 5.2 million pounds per year, um, even ahead of the famous Rio Tinto's Rossi and Paladin Langer Heinrich mines. Let's have a quick look at Ondondu. Ondondu is the gold project. Forces owns 51% of the Ondondu prospecting license for basin pressure metal exploration. B2 Gold owns the 49%. And if B2 Gold exercise their second right, could move to 75%, which would trigger options on the balance for, um, for paying over $8.5 million to buy the remainder. This is due in January 2022. If B2 Gold withdraws from the agreement, they have to transfer all ownership in Ondondu back to Forces for nil consideration. So it's actually a win-win for Forces. If you don't know Namibia, Namibia is um, a proven mining jurisdiction as fourth largest producer in 2019 and fifth largest producer in 2021. The country is pro-business and strong. It has a stable democracy. The government is very supportive of growth of its nuclear industry. It's got a fair and balanced tax code and the infrastructure has been ranked number one in Africa across water power and roads. So in fact, it's a great jurisdiction for mining. Let's look at the capital structure. With strong institutional base at 59%, with good long-term relationships, and recently two leading institutions, both Red Cloud and Canaccord, completed a bought deal equity finance in 26 million units. We currently have a market cap of approximately 185 Canadian dollars, um, with shares outstanding of 193 million. Cash is good. Let's look at the share price very quickly. Like many other producers, our share price has been depressed during the last few years. That has seen a huge resurgence during 2021, 12 cents to 1.30 at the high in September. However, given that the DFS results are excellent, we believe there is a strong potential for the price to rise as uranium prices increase. Two thousand and twenty one milestones. We've actually had a busy year. We completed the board deal. We reorganized the board. We appointed Jeremy Hangula and I was appointed as well. We've been working hard on advancing the Narasa project. We've recruited a COO and we recruited a technical project or recruiting COO and recruited a technical project manager, um, which I just announced this morning. And we're looking at preparing plans about actually moving the exploration license to a mining license in Nanipla. We've been reviewing existing technical reports and supporting uh, and appointing experts to update the 215 uh, DFS. We've redefined strategy, milestones and objectives. I've been appointed as Director of Investor Relations and I'm in the process of formulating the 2022 marketing plan and we've refreshed the website and corporate presentation. So finally, why invest in forces? Well, there are compelling reasons. Firstly, we all know the imbalance of the uranium supply and demand factors, together with the wake up globally um, to the need for nuclear power, makes it a sensible conclusion that uranium prices are entering a bull phase. This could inevitably um, positively impact producer equity. 
enterprises, including our own. Secondly, Narasa holds a mining license and is a fully permitted feasibility stage project. Reserves are proven and probable, which makes it potentially the sixth largest producer in the world. DFS financial models exhibit strong economics, which you see on the screen. The management and board are strong and experienced in mining, particularly in Namibia. Namibia itself is a great mining environment, which I've explained, where we have strong ties with the government. And we are well capitalized with no debt and committed to creating shareholder wealth. Thus, in conclusion, given that our share price has risen significantly during 2021, we feel it is very much a company for you to watch. Thank you very much indeed all. Great, thank you for your great presentation, Richard. So uh, yeah, we do have a few questions already. So uh, maybe could you tell us how you recently strengthened your management team? Yes, indeed. So we, uh, and this is in process, by the way. Um, and first of all, we effectively have been in, uh, uh, as a lot of uh, juniors have been in the, the doldrums with the price being so low. Um, but what we have done is maintained everything that we should have done. We've now strengthened up the board. I've come onto the board and I have particular uh, you know, corporate governance skills. I have a lot of background in investment banking and hedge fund investing, particularly in the mining sector, which actually adds to the mining experience that is already on the board um, through the chairman um, and also um, uh, Paul Matisek, um, who are sig significant characters in the global mining industry. Um, we are focusing on recruitment actually in Namibia. Um, and that's the key where we really want to build our uh, strength out because that's where we need the technical expertise, um, the project managers and the people to uh, really um, uh, uh, sort of develop the projects as we move forward. And actually, finally, it needs to be noted that one of the key areas where we have um, uh, obviously um, uh, added is through Jeremy Hangula, who has very strong ties with the government, which as we're all aware, local um, ties are so relevant um, when it comes to um, mining and licenses and so forth. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, yeah, Naranza had a uh, 2015 uh, definitive feasibility study, strong economics. Is there any, uh, are there any studies that are underway right now that are looking that might help either increase grades or drop costs for the upcoming uh, uh, definitive feasibility study update? I, I mean, really good question. And I, I mean, the fact is what we want to do is dust down the two, to put it simply, dust down the 2050 DFS because we need to now bring it back to date. Um, and so what we're doing, we're looking at appointing uh, technical experts to do just that. Um, it's in process. It hasn't been done yet, but we are on the case. Okay, perfect. And do you have any or all your required licenses and permits to enter production? We've got pretty much most of the permits um, that you need. Um, we obviously have the mining license for Valencia, which is the main um, site. Um, that we have, and we are in process as we speak of actually transferring, converting the exploration license of Nanitla, um, which is the other site, uh, into a mining license. Okay. And how about infrastructure uh, that's in place? Uh, can you use anything from the Rossing mine or really do you have to build everything from scratch? No, and we, we, we've actually already got infrastructure down there. We got some roads which were built back in 2010. You probably traveled on them yourself um, when you went to the mine. Um, and, um, and, and we have uh, agreements in place for, for water um, uh, through the water authorities. Um, and also the power generation. So again, it's all in process, ready to go, um, and utilizing you know, the great capacity that actually Namibia has as an infrastructure um, center. Yeah, okay, and then final question, has there been any interest from nuclear utilities regarding offtakes? Sorry, can you say that again? Has there been any interest from end users, from uh, nuclear utilities looking for uranium? Not at this point in time, but obviously, if we go back to 2008, yes, there was. <laughs> okay, great. Well, thank you, Richard. Let's leave it at that. And uh, I appreciate everybody uh, tuning in. Up next, we have Critical Elements Lithium. <laughs>